Hi, I'm Bonnie Browning with the American Quilter Society, and I'm here with David Taylor, who won first place in the Small Wall Quilts Pictorial category that's sponsored by Horn of America. Congratulations. Thank you. What a great quilt. Oh, thank you. Now, thank I want to know, first of all, why you oversized this thing the way you did. That's kind of an interesting design. Well, I like things um, oversized because that way the applique pieces get a little bigger. That's usually why my work is so large. And with my uh, background in advertising design, I know that if you make, if you crop your image in, images in tight, it'll make the image feel larger than it is. So if I had enclosed the mother and baby swan within the confines of that size, they would have been really small. Now they feel larger than life. Yes, yeah, well, it's a beautiful quilt. Thank you. And so you have a lot of applique on here. Mm -hmm. Have you done raw edge or needle turn? What have you done? I do pre-turned. So I turn all my edges on the freezer paper shapes, and then I hand applique them down one at a time. Really? So from you're background to foreground. Your hand applique. Hand applique. Oh. Because in pictorial work, it's much like a landscape, where a painter will paint the horizon first, and then you build forward. So this actually was the first piece that got stitched down, because it's farthest away, if you think of this in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then I just keep adding pieces, adding pieces, adding pieces. But the last thing that went down was her wing, because it's here in the foreground. And during the cutting out process, I actually cut out the mother's head first, meaning cutting all my applique shapes, choosing the fabrics. But it was one of the last things to be stitched down. Cutting order doesn't matter, but the placement order when I'm doing the construction does. Well, and I think what people will really pay attention to when they look at this is all the different angles you've gone with the quilting on the wings. That scared me to death <laughs> when I was doing it because I didn't know how to quilt the wings. I didn't know how to quilt the feathers. And my original idea was to do traditional quilting feathers, mm -hmm. you know, like all of our other friendly quilters do, mm -hmm. but I can't do that because I, I like to get the feel of my subject matter. So the way that mother's wing feels, as like the little wing caressing her baby. So each feather is, I want movement. So that's why all the quilting went in all different directions. I actually think this looks much more realistic oh, than if you'd have done a traditional feather design. And it probably was a little bit easier to quilt because you didn't have all of those trying to fill that space, which are For irregular. Me, yes. Yes, it was much easier to, once, once I settled back down and I decided to do my style of quilting where everything goes by movement, by direction, then I finished it up in a matter of days. Because and so how many different happens. fabrics? You have a lot of different fabrics in here. There's got to be about 70 or 80 different fabrics in here. Yes. Sometimes just one little piece out of one fabric makes all the difference. And you know I buy mostly half yard cuts or a fat quarter and the perfect piece is right smack dab in the middle of that half yard. Of course. It, but it works and so it needs to be added in. And on the, her beak, I think there are seven different fabrics in the beak. A lot of hand dyes. I buy a lot of hand dyes from other artists. Mm -hmm. I like to say, you dye, I'll buy. Uh, that's my philosophy too. <laughs> it's worth every penny, right? It is. It is. <laughs> All right, and I know that our audience always likes to know how long it takes to make a piece. This took me just over nine months to complete from start oh. to finish. Wow. Now, that's the actual construction. I actually have the photos in mind that I want to adapt, and this was adapted from a photograph by Inga McDonald, and she mm -hmm. gave me permission to turn her mother and baby swans into a quilt. And I saw that probably in March, I think, 2013, maybe 2014, and I actually got to start construction of it in August. So uh, there's always that thought process going on in the hunting and gathering phase, like yes. I like to say, so I can go to quilt shops and look at fabric and buy some fabric, maybe this will work, maybe that won't work, and amass all of that. But actual construction started August 1st, finished May 30th. Well, and you know, one of the benefits of buying fat quarters or half yards, which is basically what I do, is it forces you to combine some other fabrics, maybe of the same value. Exactly. And give more interest to the piece than if you used a single fabric. Correct. I want people in my work to see a swan made out of little bits of fabric rather than fabric cut into the shape of a swan. That's always my goal. 
Um, and the more different fabrics you can use, then the fabrics get lost, like the pattern in the chaos. You don't see the fabric anymore, you see the swan. And then you can get up close and look at them and then you can say, oh, I have that fabric. Oh, I have that fabric. I have that fabric. <laughs> and never thought to use it exactly that exactly, way. Exactly. Well, David, congratulations on well, being one you. of our winners this time. And your quilt, Beneath My Wing, is a prize winner for sure. Thank you. Thank you.